Divine Story started in 1993 when the cocoa farmers in Ghana organised themselves in a cooperative so they could get more of the value of the cocoa that they were trading. And in their AGM in 1997, they voted to set up a chocolate company. The people who'd been working with them on the ground in Ghana came back to Britain and looked for like-minded investors. And one of those investors was Body Shop International, who'd been buying cocoa from Quaffa Cocoa to make their cocoa butter products. And they thought it was a great idea to invest in a chocolate company that was owned by cocoa farmers. And then other people who made it possible was Christian Aid, who put their money and also got their activists to go into shops and buy, buy fair trade products. And then the Department for International Development also supported us with a loan guarantee because they recognised that we were going to do something to improve the lives of cocoa farmers. Then in 1998, we launched Divine in the UK chocolate market as the first mainstream fair trade chocolate company that was farmer owned. There is a growing appetite for chocolate in the world and there won't be enough cocoa to fulfil that appetite. The best way we can make cocoa more sustainable is to actually attract a future generation to cocoa farming and the best way we can do that is to pay them properly so that they can invest in planting new trees and developing new farming techniques but also they can invest in their families, in their education, in their health, in their housing and create thriving communities. Our business model delivers four income streams for cocoa farmers. So the first one is the guaranteed minimum fair trade price. And so if the price is very low, we pay that minimum price. And if the world price is higher, we pay a higher price. We also pay a $200 fair trade premium for every tonne of cocoa we buy. And the important thing about that is that the cocoa farmers decide democratically how they spend that money. Then the third income stream we create is our producer support and development. We invest 2% of our turnover, so from our top line, in working with the farmers, recognising that if you're going to work with remote and rural communities who have quite high levels of illiteracy and all sorts of logistical challenges, then you're going to have to work with them to help them build their business so they can continue supplying cocoa. And then because the cocoa farmers in Ghana, Quapa Cocoa, own 44% of the company, then they get 44% of any of the profits we distribute. And we've distributed profits since 2007. Every time somebody chooses to buy a bar of Divine, they can really know that we're delivering more income to cocoa farmers, which will make cocoa farming communities much more sustainable. All Divine chocolate is made with cocoa grown by the cocoa farmers who own the company. They're called Quapa Coco, and they have a motto in their local language, in Twi, which is Papa pa, pa which means best of the best. And that is really part of their training as the cooperative members. They learn how to ferment, dry, and pick the best quality beans. We want to empower chocolate lovers as well as farmers, so we want to give them a positive choice in the chocolate market. So the first thing is to make sure that it tastes divine. So we have a number of tests that we do internally, so we all taste the product, make sure it tastes delicious, but we also test it with our chocolate panel and they make sure that it meets our high standards. And then the next thing we do is make sure that it looks divine as well. So we work with our designers and take really great care over the packaging. So we make sure that it looks beautiful. So we use adinkras, which are West African symbols um, that celebrate our Ghanaian heritage to decorate the pack. But we also make sure it's clear what's inside the chocolate bar. So people know whether it's the natural ingredients or the fair trade ingredients that are inside the chocolate. But we also share the farmer story as well. So inside each wrapper, there's either a recipe or a farmer story. The other thing that we've done really well and I'm really proud of is the fact that we've personalised the supply chain. Linda Birchie, who's a member of Cropper Coco, the cooperative in Ghana, has just been over to Britain to tell people her story. She's spoken to people in shops and in churches and in schools, but also in Parliament. And she's spoken for herself and people hear her own story. So we've made it, we've made people think about where does cocoa come from? It comes from West Africa, but actually it comes from people who work hard to deliver the things that we enjoy every day. Consumers know that chocolate is a treat, but increasingly they know that, that some chocolates are better than others. So one of the key things for chocolate brands to do is ensure that the messages are really simple because there is a lot of product claims out in the market. 
At Divine, we ensure that our high standards are kept across the range so chocolate lovers know what they're enjoying. So as well as being fair trade, we use natural ingredients, no artificials, um, we have no palm oil in our chocolate, and no soya. We also communicate the percentage cocoa, which is becoming more important to consumers, particularly in dark chocolate, because they're using it as a way to control their sugar intake. Demand for premium chocolate continues to grow globally, and that's as consumers, when they decide to treat themselves, they're looking for something extra special. So what we're seeing emerge are chocolate explorers, so people who are interested in trying new flavours, origins and new brands. We see the role of innovation being really key to bringing our social mission to life. So we recognise a number of opportunities in the market. The first one is around higher cocoa, whether that's plain chocolate or exciting new flavours. It's an area where we're growing currently as consumers enjoy deliciously rich chocolate, but also lower in sugar. But what we're excited about is that that also delivers extra benefits to farmers as well. So this is an area we'll continue to grow in. One of the exciting areas that we continue to innovate in is collaborations particularly within gifting. So one of the recent examples is that we've worked with a gourmet popcorn brand, Joe and Seth, to create the world's first fair trade popcorn chocolate egg. It's a really exciting product where you open it and there's popcorn inside, tastes delicious, but also what we really love doing is working with other people and really spread the word of fair trade. I think Britain is known for quality and Britain is also known for food standards and so that's quite a good start when we're looking to distribute in other territories. In order for us to expand overseas then we really need to understand the local markets and so getting to understand the consumers preferences, getting to understand the retail landscape are absolutely key for us. We're looking to find partners that are used to moving other similar goods around. It doesn't have to be chocolate but non-ambient products is key and it really does depend on the territory how difficult those conditions might be. There's a global interest in British brands and so we're very excited about the opportunity to move into Southeast Asia. There's emerging wealth over there and dark chocolate is popular in some of those regions. We're currently just represented in Japan and South Korea but really quite low key at the moment. Uh, China is an enormous market that we're not represented in yet and Thailand and Singapore are also great opportunities for a brand such as ours. We're also working with an agency in Turkey and I think that could give us a really good chance to grow uh, within Europe as well. We're not finished in America and so the West Coast is still fairly untapped by us and our American business is also exporting to Canada which is another enormous opportunity. They love British chocolate over there. What was great is that we recently won an award as the Emerging Brand for Exports largely due to our business in America um, and we're hoping to maintain that momentum by expanding in Southeast Asia and through Europe. One place where we're not exporting to right now is Ghana and my dream is to find divine chocolate when I go and visit Ghana for a board meeting in the airport at Accra. Divine has been received around the world really positively. People really like the brand. They like to discover the story of the Adinkra symbols on the front and they really like the taste of it. But I think what's been interesting is that there is a growing curiosity about where our food comes from and that's growing all around the world. And so when people discover the story of Divine and the fact that the cocoa farmers that supply the cocoa own 44% of the company and get a real share of the income, then that really inspires them to make the choice of Divine. Ha ha ha!